first of all, what we have is the sunspot cycle celestial modulation, which I described to you, looking at this cosmic ray flux and the sun changing over, over time. That has a big impact upon cloud formation on the planet as a whole. This, in turn, has an impact on something called planetary waves. Now, this is a fancy term. These are large-scale uh, movements of atmosphere all around the planet, and the best example I can think of is the jet stream is a major thing which migrates and at least on our weather channel here I look at it every night and they're always showing here's a jet stream and this is why it's crappy here today or this is why it's going to be nice today and so this has a big impact upon this what's happening with the Aleutian low and the North Pacific high so this has the the correlation right here impacts the center of formation of the North Pacific high and the Aleutian low which are moving by up to 700 kilometers across the sunspot cycle so think about what's happening here as we move up to Gleisberg cycles it you know when you start to enhance the impact by three to four so this is an enormous impact upon upwelling in this region and this enhanced upwelling then is what we're seeing with our nutrients and our diatom production. So that's the climatic link between the, the proxy records that we see in Effing and Minlet and what's happening in the bigger global picture. The other next thing I wanted to show you is that I mentioned with these Gleisberg cycles, they record intervals in here between high sun intervals when you have a, a peak solar production and intervals when it's lesser. And so here's, again, I showed you this diagram. Here's a high sun activity 4,400 years ago. Here's a low sun. Here's a higher sun interval again. I want to show you exactly what happened right at this point. And we'll look at it actually visually. And this is a nice thing about this sort of a, this sort of a time series analysis. You can actually lay the core down beside it and say, oh, what was going on here? Why does this cycle show up? And here's what happens. This is a 62-year climate record right here from 4,400 years ago, year by year by year. And the question would be, so, so what? what do you, what's, the, what's the big deal about this? The big deal about this is everybody always talks about when they talk about climate change and so on. Well, you know, climate's going to change suddenly, more suddenly than it ever changed before and so on. Well, you know what? Climate can change very suddenly and it can change very profoundly. And here's an example of that right here. Here are these thick layers right here, year by year by year. And everybody in the room could recognize then these are thicker, lighter layers. These are enhanced upwelling. Okay, this is the high sun interval right up here when that, that sort of a light area right here. But look at this record right at this point right here. Suddenly we, re we move from a, a high sun part of a Gleisberg cycle to a low sun one. And almost over the point of one season, we change to a different climate regime here. We see these darker, thinner layers. The diatom production is greatly reduced now, and now it's a lot of these darker, muddy layers from enhanced rain. The Aleutian Low is starting to dominate at this point, as opposed to the upwelling, uh, the upwelling that was going on with the, the North Pacific High. And this occurred like that. Okay, so this is massive climate regime shift going on almost instantaneously. So there's, it's, a, uh, it's ludicrous the idea that climate, climate can change in all scales. It can change slowly, it can change dramatically such as we change around here, it can be colder or wetter. The records that we see here show how dramatically fast that change can be. Now just move to the north for just a couple of slides here to show what's happening up in the more continental regime. Okay, this is Belize Inlet, which is, and this is a, a line right here. All these colors right here basically are showing changes in temperature, oxygen, and salinity that we measure with probes that we stick in to give us water, water property data. And so this is this long red line. Then this over here is another little inlet, which, uh, which is blue, which basically you can see uh, changes in temperature, oxygen, and so on. The main point I want to show here is that on top of the, in this inlet up here, the, the water doesn't have a very high salinity. This is a, a low salinity wedge around here. It's very fresh. The same thing up here, very fresh water, and it's, it's more saline down below. And what's happening here is that there's a very, it's difficult for water to become exchanged through this place called the Natwatko Rapids. And the waters here is probably one of the highest tidal flows in the world at eight meters per second. You'd be swept away if you were, if you were put in this water right here. This just shows the standing wave as the, as the tide is turning in this particular place right here. So exchange is very, very difficult. And as a result, this place is not greatly influenced by the ocean, open ocean like we saw down uh, in, in the south at Effingham Inlet. It's controlled largely by estuarine flow, the amount of rainfall that's coming into this area from streams or, or, or from other sources. So this is what we're seeing. Although you do get a little whiff of, of, of some temperature change coming into the place. But we see the same pattern. 
up here. The high sun activity, the low sun, high sun, low sun, all responding not so much to upwelling this time, but it's responding to changes in rainfall. As the Aleutian Low, which dumps lots of water around here, moves in, dumps water in this place, and then the North Pacific High uh, is, so this is when you have North Pacific High, this is Aleutian Low. So this is low rainfall, high rainfall, low rainfall, high rainfall. So it's not upwelling, but it's the same sort of phenomena. So it's a t completely different oceanographic regime, but exactly the same sort of uh, pattern going on. And what I think this is analogous to is, the gli is, is like the, the little ice age in northern Europe. So here is something called the Maunder Minimum. This is a time when, uh, when sunspot cycles largely disappeared uh, from that part of, of uh, Europe, or basically from the world. Then they start to reappear again. So here's a sunspot cycle getting longer and longer and longer, a Gleisberg cycle that's it's, uh, piggybacked on top of that, and another one, another one, and here we are up to present time. So we've gone from this sort of a cold condition, low sun conditions, up to much warmer conditions as we have at the present time. So it's the same sort of cycles and trends that are going on. Okay, here is uh, a Bruegel's Hunters in the Snow. So a picture from, uh, from Northern Europe. And so this is sorts of conditions that you do not see there at the present time, as existed during the Maunder Minimum when there was hardly any sunspot activity and lots of cosmic rays getting in. Here's the more interesting bit right here, is that we can actually then look at these different species that live around here, and you can see that uh, in a very short freeze core that we took from Belize Inlet, that there was a radical change in this place. So there was some of these species were very abundant deeper in the core, then we changed to a whole, totally different set. And using this thing called the transfer function, we can ascribe oxygen values and temperatures uh, to these uh, distribution of these fossils. And what we saw, the interesting thing is that at a point right here, and I think I'll move to a, another slide to, uh, to show that, is that here is the transfer function. This is dated from about 1000 AD up to the present time in here. Up until about 1500 AD, oxygen levels in Belize Inlet were very low. Then almost instantly, they became moved up to much, much higher levels. The same thing with temperature. Temperature was higher than almost instantly around 1500. Uh, we moved to a, a lower uh, temperature, which stayed all through the 1800s until the latter part of the 1800s when it gradually, the temperature started to drop off and oxygen uh, started to drop off as well, which matches up beautifully with the Little Ice Age. So I think what we're seeing here is the, uh, another one of these Gleisberg cycle shifts that we're looking at. And here's just a little model to show what, how this happened, is that Belize Inlet, during the time when oxygen levels were low, basically it rained a lot in this area. So enhanced rainfall, which resulted in a very thick wedge of fresh water going across that very narrow little wacko rapids out here, water couldn't get in from the open ocean at all. And it resulted in this water in here becoming very stagnant. Then, as we moved on later, Belize Inlet, the, the, uh, as we moved the North Pacific High begin to dominate in that area, the, uh, it resulted in lower salinity water leaving, but it's a, th a thinner wedge, and so water could actually get in and oxygen levels start to go up again. And so it can happen very, very quickly. It doesn't take much. If you add a lot of water into this very uh, narrow little inlet up there, it can result in a serious restriction of the amount of exchange going on and almost instantaneous development of anoxia. So this is our little ice age record that we see in this uh, region as well, which is controlled by, again, these movements in the North Pacific High and Aleutian Low. It's not, it's not upwelling. We're looking at changes in actual rainfall uh, at this stage. So finally then, the conclusion that we've drawn from this research, uh, carried out over seven, several years here, that basically we see very uh, c conclusive, I'd think, evidence of, of natural cyclic uh, phenomena, which we think is driven by these celestial variation, which has an impact of the solar forcing basically being modulated by cosmic ray flux, which is, seems to be a prime driver of not only climate in the Northeast Pacific, but also has a profound influ uh, influence upon biological processes as well.